Hi everybody, welcome to my watercolour class today. I'm going to show you how to paint these really pretty acorns. This is a class specifically for beginners. I'm Rebecca Jarman and let's get started. So what you're going to need for this video is a pencil to draw your acorns onto your watercolour paper. So it's an ordinary HB pencil. As you can see, I've already drawn mine on the paper ready to go. Just grab an image off Google or something like that and copy it down onto your watercolour paper. I have stuck my paper down again to a board. It's just a piece of, um, an old piece of backing board from um, one of my pads. So it's ideal, it's nice and stiff, and it keeps the paper flat. So I've used masking tape to stick the paper down. You'll also need um, two brushes, a number four round and a number eight round, but any large round brush and a smaller round detail brush is fine. You will need cadmium yellow, cadmium red, and French ultramarine blue, those are the three primary colours I'll be using today, but if you have slightly different red, yellows and blues, it's absolutely fine. I have two pots of water, one for cleaning my brush and one for mixing clean water with the paint so that we don't get muddy colours. You'll also need some table salt, I'm going to teach you a nice technique to create texture. Um, a paper towel is great, have that to hand to clean your brushes. And that's everything that we're going to use today. So keeping it nice and simple. I am going to begin by mixing the colours we're going to need. So um, let's start off by mixing the brown for the acorns. Take a little bit of water onto your palette. And to mix a brown, always start off by creating an orange. So you start with the yellow. Into that yellow, add a little red to create your orange. So we mixed orange last week in the pumpkin tutorial. So you should all be familiar with that now. Clean off your brush again. And this is where we add blue. So depending on the amount of each colour you put into this mix, will change the overall colour um, of your brown. So here, I've gone quite heavy with the yellow and blue, so I've got quite green colour. So if I show you here, so I've actually mixed a green. So we want brown. If I add red to that green, which is opposite green on the colour wheel, it should turn it nice and brown for us. So adding in a bit of red. And there we go. And I get a lovely brown colour to use. So that's great. So that's the brown. And what we're going to do is we're just going to add a little bit of water to that brown to make the lighter colour on the top of the acorns. Now we're going to need green for the leaves and also the stem. So um, again, starting off with a little bit of clean water on your palette. Always begin with the lighter colour when you're mixing. If you're um, new to mixing, we always start with the lightest colour and then we add little bits of the darker colour until we create the colour that we need. So I've got yellow on the palette, clean off my brush each time before going into a new colour. That keeps all my colours nice and clean. So now I've gone into my blue, add it to the yellow and we've created quite a nice green. Your green might be lighter or it might be darker but it really doesn't matter. So we're just creating a lovely quick beginner's painting here. So as long as you create a green that you're happy with, then we can get started. Okay, so I'm going to swap brushes now, take my larger round brush. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to paint the bottom part of the acorn with the brown that we've mixed. I'm just going to add a touch of water to that. Okay, and starting on the left by the little acorn cup, so I'm up to the edge of that acorn cup, and I'm going to drag that paint across 
the acorn and across to the right. Moving fairly quickly so that the paint doesn't dry before I've filled in the entire space. What happens then is you end up with um, some lines in the paint. You don't get this nice smooth area of colour. You end up with sort of stripey effect. So if you work nice and quickly with a bigger brush, then you should get a nice even coating of paint on there. Okay, and then straight away, I'm gonna move on to the next acorn doing exactly the same thing so just drawing with the edge of my tip of my brush bringing it all down that top edge against the cap of the acorn if you like its little hat and again dragging the paint drawing it down until i've covered apply the paint keep going back to your palette if you're running out of paint on your brush and just bringing it all the way down to the end there okay so that's the base the basic acorn itself and i'm not going to paint the little caps yet because the edges are too wet if i go in with um, a different shade of brown it'll start bleeding into the areas i've already painted and i don't want that to happen I want to have a nice crisp clean edge there so I'm going to let that dry first of all and clean off my brush and move on to the leaves so nice clean brush bit of water clean water into that green that I've mixed and we're going to paint in these leaves so if you remember from the last time we use the very tip of the round brush to create thinner marks. You can create nice thin lines by applying just a small amount of pressure, just touching the tip of the brush to the surface of the paper. When you push down on the brush, it creates a much fatter line. So that's how we're controlling the paint. So you can fill in quite large areas by pressing down on the brush like so and then when you get to the edges just lighten up that pressure and you can control those nice edges there with the tip of the brush if you need to turn your piece around so that the painting becomes easier so I'm going to keep turning mine around so that I get nice edges I can draw more easily that way and fill in those shapes and because I'm using a big brush it does hold a lot of paint so I've only had to reapply paint once on this large leaf so that's the beauty of using a slightly bigger brush but because it has a point we can still control where the paint goes like that so in exactly the same way I'm going to do move on to the second leaf and controlling the pressure I can get some larger areas filled in and light pressure to get those bristles the tips of the bristles just to follow the outline there and drag that paint down So again moving fairly quickly because the paper's dry and we don't want to have any hard lines. If you paint slowly, the actual paint that you're using will have a chance to dry on the paper before you come to paint the next section. You'll end up with lines running through your painting. So, if you are somebody who is a little bit nervous of painting and you're a bit slow then what i recommend is that you wet the leaf first just with water and then um then paint the, the apply the paint on top of that 
that way it will give you a little bit more time to work you won't have to rush yourself okay so those are the two leaves painted in nicely that's given chance to the, for the paint to dry on the acorns there so I can move back across to the hats the acorn hats and show you what we're going to do with our salt so this salt resist technique is really quite exciting um, you can create some beautiful effects with salt um, now as you can see I've not got much brown on my palette so I'm just going to add some water to what I've got there but that's way too pale I need a darker color so I'm going to mix up more brown starting again with the yellow rinsing off my brush in with some red remember to make the orange first okay and then into the blue so i want a slightly paler brown this time or a slightly different brown so it could be a more orange brown um, just lighter than the first brown that we mixed so if I get my tester strip here and show you it's a slightly warmer orangey brown that I've mixed this time and if I hold that strip against what I've painted I can clearly see there's a difference there in the two colours so I know that when I put this paint down it will um, look different to what I've already painted which is exactly what I want it to do I don't want the two colours to blend together. I want them to be two separate shapes effectively. Now then, so I have um, mixed up enough paint to cover both of those caps and I'm going to quickly put the paint down onto um, dry paper, fill in that shape as quickly as possible. Um, before it, it has chance to dry, so I'm really quick here. You could do one cap at a time if you want, that's absolutely fine, but I'm quite fast. I've got a nice big brush, I can fill this out quite quickly. So, by all means, if you feel comfortable, more comfortable just doing one at a time, then absolutely do that. But I've gone nice and quick, and I'm not too fussy either. I'm going to put some paint just gonna let pop down some more paint just by touching the bristles on the surface so we've got some more paint there and then now this is wet if I hold it up to the light you should be able to see that that surface is shiny and wet and you need to take your table salt just a little pinch pinch of salt in in your hand like this from a distance and you sprinkle it down across the surface where you've just applied that brown paint okay so I haven't used all of that salt you can see there's still a little bit in my hand but I've got enough down there now and if I show you a close-up you can see where that salt is lying on the surface and what happens is it sucks up the paint and once it's dried we can remove the salt and it leaves a texture behind so we have to be really patient now i'm going to go away allow this to dry and show you the result in a second welcome back it's been about half an hour 45 minutes and that's given the paint a chance to dry you can also speed up the process a little bit at the end with a hairdryer and if I just show you what we've got here so you can see that the salt has actually sucked up some of the paint that's surrounding each granule and left behind this lovely texture and what we have to do now is brush away that salt so if you just use the tips of your fingers, the pads of your fingers, just to gently remove that from the surface. It should come off quite easily. Just tap it off onto the table. Um, I can see that there's a little bit still here. So if you just use your fingertips just to remove those last few grains, quick tap. 
and then we're ready to start again. So what we're going to do next is, if you can see on mine, obviously I've got two um, acorns in my picture and they are overlapping each other and the heads of the acorns, the little hats that we've just painted, have actually merged into one. I need to separate those out. So I'm going to do that by creating a shadow um, between the two. So I need to mix up a darker brown. So I've got a little bit of uh, brown left on my palette here, but I need to mix up some fresh. So starting with my yellow, exactly the same as before. So a little bit of yellow paint, clean brush, straight into the red. So by now you should be nice and familiar with mixing brown. So there we've got that lovely ready orange tone. And then finally, you've guessed it, we add blue. And I want this brown to be um, darker than the brown that I've used here on the heads um, because it's a shadow colour. Now I'm just going to test what I've got here. So it's actually a little green. So what we do is we go in with a tiny bit of red and that knocks back the green and neutralises it and turns it into a brown. That's a better colour. So there we go. So that's the brown that I've mixed. And I can just see the line that I drew at the beginning and I'm going to follow that line with the brown paint to create a shadow line. But I don't want this to be um, just a stripe. So now what I'm going to do is quickly clean my brush, take off that dirty water, clean water on my brush now. And to soften this line, I'm just going to draw that water down that edge and it will drag out some of that dark brown colour. And it just softens that shadow nicely for me there. Okay. And um, that creates two separate shapes for me, which works really well. Now, if you can remember in my previous video, I showed you how to create highlights. And what we do is we take clean brush with clean water. And I want to add a couple of highlights on these acorns now. Um, so on the top section of this acorn here, I'm just rubbing at the surface with clean water and then dabbing it away with my paper towel. And sort of using circular motions just to reactivate the paint that's on the paper and then you can lift it away and it may take it may take a few a few goes if you have a slightly stiffer brush with stiffer bristles that works quite nicely we've got a bit of a, a highlight there going on that's fine and then I'm going to do the same with this acorn over here just lighten up that section and dab that paint away. We can have, we're starting to get a nice highlight there. There we go. And then to make these parts of the acorns a little bit more three dimensional, I'm going to wet my brush, apply a little bit of paint along that bottom edge coming sort of halfway up the shape. So that's just wetting the paper with clean water. And now I'm going to go into my dark shadow color, pick up some of that brown and run my paintbrush along that bottom edge and encourage it to come partway up the shape of the acorn. And that gives us that sort of three-dimensional shape. So we've got the light on the top and the dark underneath. I'm going to do exactly the same with this second acorn here. So clean water on my brush. Taking it sort of a third of the way up really, I suppose. The clean water. Just look from as, 
an angle, if you can't see where you've applied the water, if you tilt your paper you'll be able to see the shiny surface where it's been applied. And then back into my brown and encourage it to spread up, part way up that shape. does a large amount. It works really well. I'm just going to take that brown all the way along the top edge where the acorn meets its little hat to give a shadow there as well. And the same across this one. So just a little sharp line with the dark brown and we've got that shadow occurring. So now the two acorns look much more three-dimensional. Now, um, we need to have a little look at the green here for the stem. So we're going to mix, I've used up all my green, so I'm going to mix some more, starting with the yellow, and then a touch of blue until you're happy with the green. That's a little bit too yellow so far, so in with a touch more blue. There we go, that's much better. And I'm simply using, again, my, my smaller brush. I'm going to turn my page, make it easier for me to come in with the tip of my brush and just fill in that shape with the green paint. So just to add some detail to this, I'm going to tip the tip of my brush into the brown and create a bit of shadow at the base there where it joins the acorns. Now that's looking fab, that's really really nice, the acorns and the little hats are standing out beautifully there. So we just need to work on finally on the leaves and what I'm going to do here is with a clean brush, clean water, I'm just going to remove some of the paint by lifting just like we did with the highlights on the acorns. I'm just working my way along the centre of the um, leaf to remove some of that paint and create the veins in, in the leaf. So it takes a little bit of time just to do this, just to lift it and lighten it as much as you need to. Just keep working at it and dabbing away with your clean paper towel until you get line that you want. So I'm going to keep going. I'll speed up this part of the video for you so that you don't have to watch me do exactly the same thing over and over again. Welcome back everybody. So this is the finished painting of my acorns. Um, as you can see it's dried nicely and I've carefully removed the masking tape and taken the paper from the board. So we've learned several techniques today. I've shown you how to use the salt resist to create the texture on those acorn hats there and we've removed some of the paint. We've lifted some paint to create highlights and we've also added shadows so that our, um, our acorns stand out and they look three-dimensional. I hope you've enjoyed painting with me today. 
I really want you guys to have fun and um, enjoy the process. So don't get too hung up about whether or not you think it's been successful. Um, just enjoy the whole painting from start to finish. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm glad you've joined me. I will see you again next week um, for another painting. Take care, guys. Bye.